Thank you for the kind introduction, Nux. So I'm Sang Hukbae from System Security Lab in KAIST. So today I will be talking about video identification attack and more precisely how an unauthorized adversary can find a user who watches a particular video over the cellular network. So this is joint work with my colleague Min Chol, Dongguan, Chol Chun, Jiu Sui, and Yongdae. So nowadays, we all use smartphones to watch the videos from YouTube, Netflix, and so on. And also, we are connected to the cellular network and use it for watching videos. So why am I talking about the watching videos? Because one's watching history tells one's political, financial interest, and personality, and social status. So therefore, Video Privacy Protection Act prevents the disclosure of one's watching history. So this shows that it is indeed important to be protected. So imagine that one can identify what someone is watching. So especially unlike these pictures, can adversary identify the video played on the victim's phone without taking a sneak peek at one's device physically. So today, I'm mainly focused on two points. So first, can an adversary do this identification without telco's help or installing malware on the device? And second point is a bit different. So can we physically expose a victim who is watching a particular video? In other words, the first question is identifying a movie, while the second question is identifying a victim watching the particular video. So there are two main ideas to answer this question. So first, video traffic is fingerprintable. So several studies introduced video identification attack in the wired network. And as the recent video system called HAS delivered the video into segmented way, and uh, each segment has different size due to the variable encoding rate. And this result, the on-off pattern showing a distinctive traffic over each video. So, and note that the previous works required direct access to the victim's network infrastructures and their devices. And we show these are not required in the cellular network. So the second is in LTE, as the Martin explained in the previous talk, the downlink scheduling information is broadcast without any protection. In other words, the victim's downlink resource information are continuously exposed. So therefore, the adversary can sniff the downlink traffic of all users in the base station without telco's permission. So based on these two ideas, so we come up with the video identification attack. So our attack consists of three phases. So in the first phase, the attacker selects the target videos and compute their fingerprints based on the recorded traffic. And then prepares the attack by building a class wire that identifies the target videos. And next, the attacker resides on the target cell and monitor the downlink traffic of all users. With the previous class wires, the attacker identifies the UE, or user, who is watching the one of the video in the set. And finally, in the tracking phase, the attacker exposes the victim by forcing it to make a loud tone, enabling the attacker to possibly locate the victim. And it looks simple, but there are several challenges at each phase. First, due to looking at the lower layer, we have limited monitoring capability. And I will talk about C2 and to C4 over there where C2 and C3 are difficulties caused by the video streaming over the commercial cellular network. And I will also talk about C4, and how, about, how can we conduct an attack to rebuild the victim's location. So one of the interesting challenges in monitoring the video traffic in the cellular network is that the identifier of user is frequently changing. So the commercial streaming system has on-off pattern so there is no data transmission period. And when it comes to the cellular network, the commercial cellular 
network especially, the network releases, releases the radio connection when there is no traffic for a certain period. So as the figure shows, this research that the temporal identifier of victim is changing whenever it receives a video segment. And note that this temporal identifier is anonymized one, so therefore the, the adversary should trace victims changing identifiers to monitor the complete traffic. And another challenge is that when the video is delivered to the user, the cellular network in these days use multiple channels with the help of uh, another base stations. And it is called carrier aggregation. So by doing this, the network can boost its downlink speed. However, when it comes to the attacker, the attacker only can calculate the traffic volume for the one base station and fail to monitor the complete traffic. So to solve these challenges, we fully utilize the exposed information to the air. But in this 12 minute presentation, it is difficult to explain in detail, but I will try, but you may want to read the paper for the details. So for, for the first, regarding the identifier changing issues, we constantly monitor the radio connection procedure. As the cellular network uses multiple identifiers, and some of the identifiers do not change as frequently as the radio ID called RNTI, which is uh, changing during the video streaming that I explained. So using these different identifiers, I mean, not frequently changing identifiers, you can link RNTIs. And next, multi-channel issue can also be easily solved using a sequence number maintained in the cellular network. As you see in the picture, by looking at the sequence number, you can identify the missing packets, and therefore, you can compute the complete traffic volume. And by doing this, we can monitor the complete traffic with only one sniffer device. And lastly, how can we expose the victim's location? I mean, the key, the key idea here is that only the target device receives the presidential alert messages. And to do this, the attacker forces only the victim to attach a fake base station. So the usual a fake base station attack tries to attack the all users. But on the other end, in our attack, only the target, only the target victim attached to a fake base station. And this is the most different part than the fake base station sends presidential lots to the target victim. And finally, the victim makes a loud alarm and expose its physical presence. The hard part is the first step. How can you force it? So for this, we extend the signal overshadowing attack, which we published in three years ago. So we extend this attack to support injecting the unicast message that makes the victim move to a fake base station that running in the unused frequency. So I want to show the demo first. So as you see, we set three uh, mobile devices and one in the left will watching the video, which is not our target list, and one in the middle will watch the video we target. And the last one in the right is in the either state, meaning that where there is no communication between the base station. And all devices are actually connected to the commercial network. So once the victim start to watch, uh, it takes some time to, for sniffing. And as you see, the fake base station uh, is running in the unused frequency so, so that the devices are still connected to the commercial network without any alarm. And uh, so. Yep, so once it identified, the adversary selectively forced a victim to move to their fake base station without disrupting other victims. So as you see, only the targeted one will raise the alarm. We also verify our attacks feasibility in various environment, 
and please check the details, research, and the analysis in our paper. So in this talk, I presented video identification attack on the commercial cellular network. And previous and this presentation show that cellular network has serious privacy problem. And these are the attacks will not never be patched in the IT. And for 5G, maybe I like, I'd like to see what happened. So that's all I have to say in this talk. So please check our paper and GitHub for the details. And thanks, and I'll be happy to take questions.